Hi beautiful souls, this is Sadhana. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm back for another deck pairing video and I really want to say thank you very much for all your amazing comments and your feedback to this series. I never dreamed that when I started the series that I would be on my 14th video by now and I have many more planned. So for those of you that are really enjoying this series, I um, yeah, just really appreciate your support. So today I'm going to start with the Crow Tarot and I just wanted to mention that um, the Crow Tarot in the box for the deck comes with this small guidebook here. And MJ um, Kulanane, Kulanane, I don't know how to say her name, MJ, sorry. Um, this These two books are quite different and I just wanted to show you in case this is a deck that resonates with you. So let's just go to this one because I just opened to this page. So here we have the Ace of Swords. Okay, so here's the mini guidebook. And for the Ace of Swords, all you get is this little bit here. The Ace of Swords brings dynamic raw energy. And for those who have the mental and physical strength, it offers a power that will quickly break through any barrier. The Ace of Swords card represents a time of ideas, problem solving, and quick mindedness little bit more here and then a tiny little reversal message. So in the larger guidebook we have this kind of general message here and this is what is not found in the smaller guidebook. So this is a description of the artwork itself. So the crow found itself increasingly frustrated by a situation it didn't comprehend and other lesser intelligent birds may have given up but not the crow. No, it channeled its frustration and use the electricity to feed its desire to find clarity. So the message here is through the perception of the crow, whereas the message here is more of a, a general ace of swords message. And then you have specific, um, it's so funny, and I've had a few comments about my chopstick lately. Um, I just really like using the chopstick instead of my finger, so, and this one is so very pretty. Um, so we talk about the symbolism and so you get that broken down in this book and then past, present and advice. So if you get the reading, if you get the card in different positions of the reading. So the larger guidebook I think is available through her website and it really is, if you like this tarot, it's very, um, it's worth the extra, the extra cost for sure. So this is the deck here and I have shuffled it several times. This is a larger deck too. So if you have little hands, you probably won't like this deck or you'll be over hand shuffling it. So even for me, I have fairly large hands. It's quite, quite a mitful to shuffle. Such a beautiful, beautiful deck. I love the, um, you know, it almost looks tea stained, but it's not tea stained, if that makes sense. And the borders I find on this deck are definitely, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, this is not a deck that I would, that I would trim. And it would also be challenging to trim too, because on some of them, uh, I just wanted to show you. So for here, here's the hermit, right? So we have this beautiful artwork above the painting. And um, so, yeah, so not a deck you would, you would likely want to trim. Anyway, let's get to the pairing. And I'm just wondering if you have any idea what I'm going to pair with it today. Um, I don't want to get really lost in readings today. I'm going to do my best to keep them really brief and just make a comment because I've got five pairs of decks I want to include in this video. So the deck that is going in the middle is brand new to me. Um, I just received it a couple weeks ago and so have not been playing with it too much. This is Stacia Barrington's um, new Oracle deck. It's called the Empty Cup Oracle. It's quite a small Oracle deck. I should show you. It's got um, a matte gilding on the side. It's a beautiful. So unlike the Cesar Ibito Tarot, it is, um, it's matte. And it's just that beautiful velvety um, cardstock. And I do, I'm probably not going to pair this with the Cesar Ibito Tarot, even though it's the same artist and um, a similar kind of uh, design feel, but um, I think it goes really beautifully with the Crow Tarot. <laughs> so here we have the Page of Wands. So the Page of Wands for me is about that creative action, that stepping forward. There's also always a sense of playfulness, but in the Crow Tarot in particular, I see this kind of 
um, quilt almost below where the crow is standing on her wand and it feels very um, it feels intricate in a way as well as the first step in oh my god that's so funny I, I swear I do not plan these things these cards are shuffled and um, you are getting a completely spontaneous reading and this happens every single time I make these videos. So I was talking about quilting and of course we pull the needle and thread card. Um, so this reading to me very much feels like taking things uh, step by step. But we have the page and the king of wands. So this feels progressive. And when you get cards that are in sequence, really kind of pay attention to the energy that is building. And it feels very much like that. And so it feels like this is a project that you really, really want to take charge of. Stacia's guidebook. I'm just going to show you because I've never shown this um, deck on, um, on a video just so you have a feel for what she includes. I am reading this deck completely um, intuitively, but you have about, sorry, this much of a description. So mending, enhancing, finding beauty in age and care, i.e. the Velveteen Rabbit. The Japanese concept of Wabi Wabi turns the obsession with a sparkling brand new on its head. Instead, beauty comes from objects over and over, oiled by hands, faded from being washed repeatedly, patched and repaired, over being disposed, energy goes into objects. The act of loving and keeping care of improves that object, be it a jacket, a toy, or a relationship. Some things need to be thrown out, but think about what things are worth loving over and over. And so a quilt is a perfect example of that because a quilt does wear and instead of um, repairing it, sometimes these things get you know thrown away. And so this is just such a beautiful, beautiful metaphor. And the reason that I've paired these two decks together is for the the quote the crow tarot is quite busy, and I just really feel that the empty cup just gives it that kind of spaciousness that it needs. And sometimes when decks are really, really busy, if you have a quieter oracle deck, you're going to be able to um, delve deeper into the. Um, the nuances of the reading. So we have the lovers and the queen of cups. So really kind of focusing on the big picture. So when you look through a telescope, you see the magnificence of the sky overhead. And we kind of see the, um, the version of what's happening down here on the earth in the sky. So if you are attuned to astrology, that is easier than if you are not. But even just observing the night sky kind of gives us that sense of we are just a player. We're just a small, you know, microbe in the whole, what we know of, of as the, the world and all the people in the world. So really kind of keep this relationship in perspective. And if things are feeling challenging or a little too emotional at this time or not quite in balance, then just Take a moment to step back and to really kind of look at that through um, through a different lens. And sometimes those lent different lenses are hard to step into, but that really will serve the relationship a lot better if you can um, if you can view it from a different lens. All right, so let's have a look what we got here. Hmm. Ooh, look at that card, Tangle. And look how, so the Tangle card is kind of mirroring what's going on in the water here. That's really beautiful. And then we have the Five of Swords. So this is kind of a tricky reading. So while you may feel you are on the brink of stepping forward to something new and to something brilliant, it may be it may take a little time to find some clarity with this. So it's really important, and I'm drawing this from the Five of Swords, to choose your words carefully, to choose the, um, the design of your plan very precisely and not to waste energy where you feel that it isn't serving 
what it is you're moving forward with because it might take a little while to kind of navigate through to to find um you know light and clarity on the other side of these two challenging cards here so where I would go with this reading is to pull um, a fourth and perhaps a fifth card and just kind of see why, or perhaps even ask that specifically. So what is this um, entanglement? What is this kind of delay about? Because this is quite an optimistic card. And so sometimes when we get these optimistic cards, we feel like the sense of relief and it's permission to go ahead and step ahead. But stepping ahead here is going to be um, a little bit slower journey than you may have expected. All right, let's go to Stacia's other deck. So this is the Sassy Burrito, the Sassurai Bito. So the deck of the Wanderer. This is such a brilliant deck, and I have really enjoyed working with this deck ever since I got it. It's not out all the time. I still have Lily White and Textured are pretty much always in my basket, but this is definitely up um up there in my top top five decks this deck i have found very challenging to find an oracle deck to pair with and one of the reasons i purchased the empty cup was i thought i was wondering if these two decks would work well together but i don't think it's a it's a suitable suitable pair at least it hasn't worked that way for me so I'm going to go to another favorite um, artist and we're going to go to Celia Melsville's deck also fairly new to my collection so this is the Oracle de Reflet and I have shown this one before as well and I did kind of peg this deck as more of a shadow work kind of deck I feel that this deck really does lean toward the more challenging aspects of a reading. And so what is going to come up is perhaps more of a reversed type message, right? Or something that is, you might not want to face. <laughs> okay, so let's make this as difficult as possible. So we've got the tower and the fox. So there's two different aspects of the fox. And the fox is super, super clever. And also there can be a sense of deceit and manipulation. However, with the tower, I really read this as it just, it has to happen. You really, at this point in your life, need to have the rug pulled out from underneath you because you haven't been following through. What You haven't been either walking the talk or you haven't been paying attention to the messages. And so this, I'm not going to really uh, perceive as any... Um, what I want to say, foul play, rather the moving forward, because see how the fox is, the head of the fox is closer to this card. So I'm going to look to the kind of how are you going to move forward? How are you going to work through this um, with the card over here on the right? The other aspect of the fox, which I really um, like to work with is the more magical aspect of the fox and I know I've mentioned this several times in different videos but if you have not used read or um, watched a video of the fox oh, what's it called um, there is a fox oracle deck I'll pull it out a little bit later and show it to you it's just brilliant it's the kitsune oracle that's the one it really kind of brings to light a whole different perception of the fox. And so the fox is quite close here to the King of Cups. Love, love, love this King of Cups. And so a couple of things are coming up for me. One is to lean on family and to trust in the magic of family. If you are having some sort of issues with family and this tower card represents something that's coming apart at the seams with family and giving you permission to kind of step out on your own, then perhaps this is a card to warn caution about um, not because things have this usually presents a diff very challenging and difficult situation. So I don't want you to go and run back home. This is about a card about you venturing out on your own. So lots of different ways I could go with this reading. Also, the King of Cups is the kind of family man that you want to be near and he's going to listen to you and you're going to be able to lean on his shoulder. So the other possible interpretation would be that 
it's time for you to um, stop trying to be so tricky and manipulative yourself and really once and for all open up your heart and kind of um, move towards a better relationship with this energy. And this could be reflecting yourself as well too and allowing this energy to come forward. And so you really kind of learn to be more comfortable in your authentic self. I know that word gets thrown around way too easily, but expressing your emotions, trusting your intuition, being okay with your softer side and things like that. So again, not a, a simple reading by by any means, but let's have a look at kind of the colors and the energy of these two decks and why they work together. So we have a lot, we have the black border on the Sasser Ibito, but we also have a lot of black lines and having um, this beautiful deck by Celia here kind of really picks up on that energy and you'll see also a lot of browns and golds in the Sasser Ibito that just works really beautifully with the, um, the Oracle de Reflet. Yeah. Okay. So we have three of cups and the star. So again, this is kind of what happens. So you may have been working toward a six card or a nine card reading. And so this is going to expand on the previous, um, the previous three card where things were really, really very challenging. The mandala represents sacred geometry. So it really represents getting, um, into the magic of nature so connecting deeply with the earth element and starting to recognize the sacred in the mundane and that can really help to bring about a new sense of perspective and so if the tower card was a part of this larger reading and you're stepping forward with a new perspective and we had that king of cups card which fits really nicely with the three of cups that energy and that emotion may be very well supported by being in the company of others and not stepping out necessarily or not feeling like you have to do this entirely on your own and finding the this is a bit like um you know, a lot of Oracle decks have like a chai card or a cup of coffee or a cup of tea card. It's like that finding the, and not saying that having a cup of tea with friends is mundane, but just finding the simple pleasures, simple pleasures in life, right? So you're, you're really starting to um, trust a lot more and to um, step out of the ego, which I think is a really, really important lesson from the tower card. And that we don't always have control of every step along the way. Let's do one more. So we have the Knight of Swords. I think Stacey has really, really beautiful court cards in this deck. And we have the Owl. So again, right, two cards that really talk beautifully together here. And then look at the browns and the golds and the blacks. And they just really kind of... Um, they work. There's a conversation that happens here. So we're looking here at a real beginning of, so with the Knight of Swords, though I'm going to kind of go with the intellectual side of the swords for this reading, just because of the card that came up in the middle. And I'm looking ahead here to the Emperor. Really, really important to find balance between all of the studying that you've been doing all of the research that you've been doing. Maybe you are a grad student and you are just, you know, you're in the books constantly and, you know, working on projects. Maybe you're working to defend your thesis or something. And that energy is um, physically also very exhausting. And there comes a point where you kind of hit a wall and you can't study anymore and you may go out and, you know, you, you go to too many parties or whatever. You get distracted. Instead of doing that, if you could sit quietly and begin to trust that inner wisdom where you begin to reflect and recall everything that you've learned. And instead of writing a paper from your research point of view, you kind of have this aha moment and allow some kind of personal uh, reflection to come into your thought, to come into your paper. And that will begin to take everything in a completely new direction. The emperor has this real sense of 
control. And so these cards are kind of battling each other for this permission to step out of the head and to step out of the intellect and really move into trust. And you hear me say that a lot because that really does come up in tarot. And I think one of the re one of the reasons people come to tarot readings is because they're just so intermeshed and intertwined with the what seems reality of life and getting a different perspective you know is just so very very important i'm also attracted here to the smoke from the cigarette if that's what that is um and let's kind of go to the ether you know how we have right the element of air and with the major arcana sometimes that's associated with the element of ether or with spirit and so i'm just going to say something i wouldn't normally say with the emperor card and that is to take charge in a new direction you don't have to be the same kind of leader you don't have to take on the same kind of roles that you've always taken on it's okay to trust yourself and to move into um to move in a different way does that make sense i i hope you kind of understand where i was um where I was going with that. Okay. Oh, see what I mean? The colors just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really, really good pairing. And the Oracle of Reflections may, you know, get uh, to a more challenging place, but it will, it'll really kind of um, allow you to go a little bit deeper and maybe pull something out of the reading that, you wouldn't have pulled out if you didn't have um, an oracle deck that was a little deeper, for lack of a better word. So here we have health, four of pentacles. So that sense of clinging and asking yourself, why are you clinging? One of the aspects of clinging is not having an open heart. So if we cling with our hands, if we cling to our possessions, if we cling to life, if we're holding on too tight, because we fear something or there's some emotion that's too challenging that can be really, really detrimental to our health. And so perhaps, so Six of Cups has a lot of, um, you know, this, I'm sure you're all familiar with traditional meanings for Six of Cups, but look at her. She is looking, or him, or they, looking up for a breath of fresh air, looking up in hope looking up to the light, looking up in faith, looking up in trust. And so this is, you know, kind of a complete opposite um, body language. So here looking down and clinging, here looking up and being open. So this is kind of how you're going to work through this. Like you're probably feeling really, really shitty right now. And you just really need to change your body language and to kind of let go of everything that's going on. Open your arms wide, look up to the sky and take a breath of fresh air. All right, let's go to the wild unknown. I wanted to find an Oracle deck that kind of gave this deck a breath of fresh air. And as I was glancing through my shelves of decks, what caught my eye was Seeds of Shakti. And I think I was looking at the wild unknown and I saw some really colorful cards and I thought, oh, wow, why don't we try that deck? Because Seeds of Shakti is actually quite a difficult deck. Again, um, like I said, with Sasurai Bito to find a pair for because of its bright, bright colors. But as you know, in the wild unknown, we have quite a few um, super intense colors. And I just started playing around with these two decks and I found something um, something really special going on. Now, Sharon Basanti, I haven't been following her lately on Instagram, so I know she was working on a new deck, but she did say that once the new deck is printed, she will reprint Seeds of Shakti. So um, if you can't get your hands on this deck right now and you, you like it, you like what you see after these few pulls, um, just have a look at her website. You can either Google her by Sharon Basanti, and Sharon has two R's, or Seeds of Shakti Oracle, and I believe she's also known as Gypsy Arts, but I'll, I'll link all that below in the description box. Okay, so we have Sun of Pentacles with uh, the back. So the back of the deer is facing the Nine of Swords. This feels like the deer is 
kind of wallowing in misery, not wanting to face, not wanting to move through this energy. It feels a bit like Eeyore. And just because the uh, Son of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles is known for moving really, really slowly, I just feel this is a really low frequency and something needs to be done. It feels like in order to get out of this, you're really going to have to turn 180 degrees and to do something that's outside of your comfort zone. And maybe going to a yoga class or maybe going to um, actually going to a, um, oh, what do you call it? There's these um, healing, sound healing workshops. Amazing. Just lying there and letting your drinking in that energy. Maybe it's just a matter of going for a massage. Something that you have not been doing that's going to speed up the energy in your body. Actually start to shift the frequency so you feel better. You need to get out of the mud, quite literally. And so you might need somebody to help you do that. But this shift of frequency right now is really, really crucial to your well-being. So, yeah, time to time to shift what's going on. So these cards, because of the intensity of the color and the seeds of Shakti and the more black and white energy, you're also going to get this really beautiful um, conversation going on here. So the energy of Kali is really, really beautiful. And the Kali energy can, like in the previous reading, really kick us in the butt. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. We need to fall flat on our face so that we can stand up and move through whatever it is that we're moving through. The phrase here says, endings create a space for rebirth. So that Kali energy is really about... Um, yeah, it's about endings. It feels very tower-like at times. And so judgment here is that real sense of rebirth. So in order to take that next step to move forward, you're really going to have to commit to letting go to whatever it is you're holding on to. And yeah, I'm just kind of kind of go with that. How are you going to do that? Well, this might feel insurmountable. I'm just looking at that huge mountain that is in the card to the right. And so if this task is feeling insurmountable, you really are going to need to lean on other people to find your strength. And perhaps you're going to have to walk that mountain path holding the hands of others. But this is really, really important for your, for your transformation. So here we have another symbol of transformation. And this looks like you've come through the transformation, right? We have the six of wands. And sometimes when we've been through difficult times and we're feeling a little bit beaten up, it's hard to celebrate. And I think that if you, you know, sometimes people will throw you a, a success party and it's like oh my god I'm so tired I don't want to go to that party but it's like you it's not just about you right it's highly unlikely that you've got to this point on your own so you need to allow other allow others to support you and you will be nourished by that and how beautiful that we have the Diwali card here. The timing is just perfect. We're actually, Diwali is actually being celebrated um, in two days time from when this video is being recorded. So this is about allowing your inner light to shine. And look over here too. We have this, this light that's coming through the three of pentacles. And so this pattern, this path of success, this path of moving forward, this light that we see in all three of these readings is really um, supporting stepping forward with all that's going on right now. So this is not a time to hesitate. It's a time to continue to move forward and to allow your inner light to shine brightly. Moving next to Crystal Unicorn Tarot. This is a deck that I do not pull out very often. And the reason I bought it was for a little girl that I was doing readings with, 11-year-old girl. Um, so I think of her um, when I use this deck. And this is Soul Trees, which is just a beautiful deck that works with so many different cards. Crystal Unicorn Tarot is a straight up Rider Waite Smith clone. And so it's really, really easy to read. So if you're looking for um, a gentler Rider Waite Smith deck, this is really, um, really beautiful. So we have the Page of Swords 
heel, heart, and spirit. Wow, that's a beautiful tree. And the three of wands. So let's start with the card in the center. So we have the green color, which to me represents the heart chakra. And we have the purple color, which is representing the crown chakra, the Sahasara chakra. And so the healing of the heart comes through different ways, different modalities, um, different experiences. It comes through time. But there's a deep connection to spirit that comes from the crown chakra and practices of meditation and so forth. And so this card really is about... Um, allowing yourself to feel and allowing yourself to be comforted by whatever you want to call it, you know, the divine universal energy and that kind of thing. So this card tells me that there's need for some self-compassion. There's a need to really look after yourself at this time. So while the three of wands is about moving forward and going to the next step and you might be feeling a little vulnerable and a little scared to do that at this point. So in order to kind of bolster yourself up, take time for any self-care and self-compassion that is needed. The Page of Swords is about learning to be authentic and speak your truth and to, to write in a way that feels like yourself, unedited and not pleasing people and that. And so regardless of whether you are a young soul or a little bit older, you might be in a situation where you really feel like for the first time you're able to speak in a way that you're not trying to please other people and you're not really worried what other people are thinking. And it's really important for you to, um, to, to articulate what's in your heart because you're tired of putting on this facade. And so in Stepping forward to this new kind of energy, you will be doing some deep, deep healing. And so there's no wonder that you're feeling a little bit hesitant to moving forward. But please know that this definitely is um, where you need to be at this time and you are moving in the right direction. King of Pentacles. <laughs> All right. King of Pentacles is facing compassion. Well, the King of Pentacles knows all about compassion. So let's see what this card is here. And again, look at the colors. Look for clues in the trees because the trees have these beautiful, most of them have these beautiful chakra colors. So there's this little bit of blue in here, which is about truth, which is about the throat. So I just want to know why. Perhaps some secrets or lies or something is coming to the surface. And so the King of Pentacles is a really kind of good energy to lean into to work through that. And generally speaking, this King of Pentacles energies, energy is very, very compassionate. But then we have the Four of Pentacles on the other side. So there's a sense of not wanting to let go of something. And so in order to let go of something, you really might have to um, look deep inside your heart and find compassion for the other and ask yourself why is it you're not willing to let go why are you holding on so tightly why are you not able to see the big picture and so this kind of energy here needs to look towards the king of pentacles energy and realize that you know this is a about two this is a two-way street in order for you to feel well, for you to, to kind of um, to let go, you need to look at the experience of the other in relationship and know that whatever this is, this is something that's probably been, re been repeated many, many times for you and will continue to feel challenging if you don't, um, if you don't change your pattern. Sometimes these patterns are so ingrained and it can just be really really hard to act in a different way but this wouldn't have come up if you weren't ready to do that wow so this is a really unusual um combination of cards why would there be a prosperity card next to four of swords and so again look to the 
um, the colors. For me, I'm going here to red. I know this is a deep, deep magenta pink color, but this makes me feel very uh, connected to root chakra. And this looks completely exhausted and worn, emotionally worn out. Four of Swords, of course, uh, Swords is more about the mind and the disconnect between the heart and the mind. But this could have also come out of fear. So you might be feeling like this because of your fear. And if we go back to the last card where we had the Four of Pentacles and we kind of read this as a story, again, if we were pulling six or nine cards, it might have made sense because this, you know, has all come out of of a fear, perhaps, um, you know, something that's coming up from your, deep from your foundation, deep from your past, right? We could be talking about karmic patterns here. And then if we want to go even deeper, we have 444. So your foundation um, might be feeling a little rocky, but at the same time, it should be feeling really pretty darn solid. You've pulled all these fours, which is about stability and balance. So take a moment to regroup. And know that this looks very, very positive. And I'm going to go back. I want to know why. Because this doesn't make sense to me. If we were doing a six card. All right, looking at this, looking at all these six cards, laying them out. Um, not having a question or anything. But this to me looks like a consideration over a prenuptial agreement. And I would really encourage you to do some, you know, deep soul searching about this document and the reasons for this document and why um, is this coming from you or is this coming from the family? Where is the um, what's the motivation for this prenuptial agreement? So to really be respectful of everybody, of all parties and know that um the prosperity and the happiness is going to come is going to be there regardless of the prenuptial agreement and not to waste too much energy and to cause too much grief or strife over this document maybe that will resonate with one of you out there and the last combination for this video is the crystal visions tarot by jennifer galasso again another rider weight smith clone or close to that and the Messenger Oracle by Raven Fallon. And I have used this Oracle deck before in a combo. I think believed I used it with uh, Tarot of the Hidden Realms. But it works beautifully as well with Crystal Visions. Again, another deck that I don't pull out very often. This one has been trimmed. And we have the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. So that's a really beautiful combination. And look at the card in the center. Love that you are different. So, you know, we can bring out the very best in each other sometimes when we um, when we possess different qualities. And so if this is about a relationship reading, it's really, really about celebrating the differences. And if they're feeling really challenging at this time, know that they are there to help you on your journey, right? It's not always about the relationship or the story of the relationship, but it's about something in yourself that needs to come forward. So it's a really, um, wow, beautiful combination. And then we go to the Two of Cups. So we may have a continuing story here. Have courage. These relationships can be, you know, they take time to nourish. And sometimes it takes bravery to feel and to go into the depths of the emotion, to go into, you know, to be vulnerable and to allow yourself to reveal what needs to be revealed. And those things can, you know, can take time. Why is this young girl, why does she have her back to courage? You know, why is she afraid, perhaps, to... Um, to show her strength and she is very very strong the eight of pentacles i often associate with um you know really going back to something that you used to do really really well and to this may not be a continuation here i'm just going to go a completely different direction so the two of cups can be also about partnership in business and partnership and relationship in other ways. So if this is reflecting some kind of idea you've had, some kind of project, and you are shying away from bringing this to fruition, you're going to really need to dig deep 
and to talk to the other person in this relationship, in this partnership, so that it can, you know, um, become manifest. There's no reason. And perhaps if I look close, you know, there's different ways to look at this picture. She is um, focused on what she's doing, but there's a bear, there's a real sense of quiet here. Um, and also solitude. And here we have a card of partnership. And so there needs to, there's probably a little bit of, um, of work that needs to be done here in regards to standing up for your view of how this is going to come about. All right. And the last combination for today. Okay, we have a fox. Observe in silence. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes we just need to close our mouths. <laughs> and here we have another silent card. I love that world card. And we have more silence over here too. So I don't know how this happens. I really don't, right? But all three of these cards are about the same, have a very similar message. And that is about just being quiet for a little while. You never know what is going to be revealed, either through an aha moment or through a meditation, or maybe your silence is in journaling or just walking, you know, with your dog in the forest or something. But this is, so the world card represents a culmination of everything that you have been working on. And you are at this kind of precipice of the next step, the next stage. So being quiet through this period is going to be really, really important. So thank you very, very much for being here today and watching this video. And if you have any questions about the decks that I've shown today or some of the things that I've mentioned in readings, I'm happy to chat with you in the comments below. Let me know if you have any requests or any decks that you're having a hard time finding oracles to pair with or tarot cards to pair with. I also have about 16 or 17 Lenormand decks too. And so sometimes I bring those decks in, but not too often. I tend to read Lenormand just by itself. But if you want to ask any questions about that, I'm happy to make suggestions in that regard as well too. Stay well, my friends. Namaste.